Hi, and welcome to another edition of Ask Dr. Darwin. I'm Dr. Darwin Hayes, the new dentist coach. We're here today with another episode where we're going to be talking to uh, a pre-dental student that's very, very interested in becoming a dentist. Uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, answering some questions that he has. Please be sure, if you like this video, please be sure to share it uh, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Darwin Speaks. Well, I'll be posting uh, uh, videos on a weekly basis on, on Mondays. So again, thank you for joining us today. So we have a special guest, uh, Dontavius Burton is here, and we're here to kind of talk about his his thoughts about becoming a dentist. So, uh, Deontavius, why don't you introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and what you're up against and what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, good morning, good morning, all, all listeners and viewers. Uh, my name's Deontavius, Deon for short. Uh, I'm a native of St. Petersburg, Florida. You know, joined the military at 19. I've been in the military since then, doing dental assisting technician. Uh, prior to where I'm at now in Bethesda, Maryland, I was stationed in Beaufort, South Carolina, where I got most of my interpersonal skills and exposure to the dental world. I'm here today to speak to Dr. Darwin about my journey and where I, how I can be efficient in my next step as I take the leap to uh, chair side dental assisting to main side dental dentist. That's awesome, man. So you so you've been in the military for how long now? Five years. Five years. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you're stationed in Bethesda currently? Yes. It's awesome, awesome uh place to work and uh our primary purpose there is to get the dental residents out into the uh work the di different Premier military terms, so I'll try to keep it as layman as possible. And our job is to get residents to different places to work. You know, it's all around the world. You know, we all stationed in Japan and all over the world. So they all get their training to prosthodontics, the endodontic uh, residents. We have a, a resident called Comprehensive Comprehensive Dentistry, and that uh, and we all our purpose is to get them out and make sure that they have the, the uh, best skills possible to treat the patients. I got you. So yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with Bethesda and the, uh, and the actual uh, postgraduate education center there. And I was in the Air Force at, actually I was stationed at the Pentagon. I remember doing a, a two week course uh, in periodontics. It was a, it was a two week um, yeah. like a certificate program right there at the Bethesda, um, Postgraduate, I think that's, that's what it's called, the Postgraduate Center at Bethesda. So that's great, man. So you want to become a dentist. So tell me a little bit about why yes. you want you why you want to become a dentist. Wow, it, that's that's a very. I will keep it simple. I was exposed to it young. I love the facet of entrepreneurship, and most importantly, I love treating patients. So out of those three things. Um, it's really become a passion and uh, it's a field that I see myself growing in and continue to grow in. Um, That's great. I, mean, did I was you... in growing up. Go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just mentioning it's like growing up, I was first exposed to dentistry, not knowing I was exposed to dentistry. Um, I went to the after school program, summer camps. I'm not sure if you have or, or haven't. Uh, but at summer camps, they would have people come in. And a, a great experience, a positive experience that I had was um, with the, the pink tablets that people would put in their mouths. Uh, they gave it out to a bunch of us kids. And I just I had a fond memory of us running to the, to the water fountain to try them on just for fun. But I'm, now that I'm in the dental world and I see the uh, impact of those tablets um, and what they show as far as uh, where you brush and stuff like that um it, it, it started there that, that's when the seed was first planted okay if i should say that's great man that's great so let's talk a little bit about um about where you are now and um i know you have some specific questions so 
let's 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 dive into those like are you, like what are you doing right now as in the dental assistant preparing for dental school as far as um, my manual dexterity or my academic no exactly like what what are you doing to to prepare for dental school you know there's dental school has pre prerequisites certain classes that you have to take you have to have yes completed so where, yeah. where where are you with 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 yes. any of that? I'm trying to stay away from the prerequisites as of now. Um, looking at the, the dentists that I work around and uh, the insight that I've gotten, I'm trying to have them all grouped together to have my dental uh, school packet stronger versus taking one science class at a time. So I'm going a, a very non-traditional route. And I'm, I'm, my route might be taking a little longer, but that's why I'm here to kind of uh, see you and see if my uh, my journey or the way I'm about to go about things is the right way or sh should I uh, revisit my journey. So right now I'm looking at, I'm in, I just transferred from my community college from St. Petersburg College that I've been attending since I uh, got in the military. And I just transferred to University of Maryland University College, just the military college. And there, I'm I'm looking into acquiring my bachelor's in science, which I should have in 2019 in human resource management. Uh, I don't transition to out of the military into 2021, so I have time to do what maybe an, a graduate degree if it would strengthen my package or ask to start taking science classes. But that's why I'm here to talk to you today, uh, today, Dr. Darwin, so I can get a better understanding of where I should go. All right, so good. You're in luck, man. I got some good information for you. So uh, the first step is the prerequisites. The prerequisites. Um, and you mentioned being a non-traditional candidate or taking a non-traditional route. So it can be done. I've done it. I was, a, I was an architect major, uh, uh, undergrad, and ended up, when I made the switch to dentistry, or, or actually had the interest in becoming a dentist, I was working about 50 hours uh, a week and also taking classes at night. I took classes at a local community college, my science, uh, a couple of the classes that I did not have in undergrad, uh, and did that and fulfilled those requirements. So. That's going to be what is going to be needed uh, initially. You got to get all those prerequisites done. Um, it's great now that you've transferred from St. Pete's uh, Community College down in Florida and transferred those, those, uh, those credit hours and everything over to the University of Maryland uh, University Center. That's, that's yes. great. That's awesome. Um, and you're on, on target to graduate with a degree in, in HR, you said? Yes. Okay. So one of the things that you may want to consider is um, either now or after you get your degree is those prerequisite classes. When you get out in 2021, it may be possible that you can set that as a goal as the time that you're going to want to start dental school in 2021 when your commitment is up. So if you backtrack, if you're going to start in 2021, dental school in 2021, that means you've got, basically you've got three years. You've got three years to fulfill your military obligation, continue to get your undergrad degree in HR, but also in this particular case, most importantly, get your prerequisites for dental school. So if you've got three years to do that, that potentially means you've got three years times two, there's two semesters in a year. So you've got six semesters to get the rest of these prerequisites that you need for dental school. If you were, uh, uh, if you were going to apply or at least make an attempt to be accepted by 2021. Maybe, maybe 2022 may be 
more realistic as a as a target? What do what are you thinking? What, what, how soon do you want to start dental school? Twenty twenty three. So you're looking to starting dental school in twenty twenty three. All right. Yes. So, so that's five five years from now. So now you've got actually more time. You got five years. Uh, you got four years. Four years times two semesters a year. So you got about eight semesters that you can get all this done. So. Um, Taking that route will, will get you to the first step, which is getting all your prerequisites done. So that's first and foremost. But at some point during that time, between now and 2022, you need to take the DAT because that also um, will, that, that's a requirement. So. The information that's in the DAT, as far as the subjects that are going to be talked about or that'll be questions that, go, that are going to be on it, those questions are basically a lot of the basic sciences. There's a basic science section, there's a, a reading comprehension section, there's also a perceptual ability section. All right. The reading comprehension and the perceptual ability, you don't have to necessarily take a class to learn that information. But the basic sciences, which is the core of the exam, that's that information you're going to get from you taking the, the prerequisites over these next four years. <coughs> so you wouldn't start studying for the DAT until you've completed your prerequisites or at least gotten most of them at least 80 percent of them done because all most of the content for the DAT for the basic sciences is going to be all uh, part of the information that you're going to be learning for your prerequisite classes so the DAT would be pretty much would be the second step so I, I wouldn't see you taking the DAT until uh, sometime 2022 or 2021 um based on your timeline because you want to you want to take it early enough so that you can uh, be familiar with it but also so that you can give yourself some additional time to uh be able to take it again take it a second time if, if you need to okay okay also when you get to that point when you get to the point where you finish your prerequisites and you're starting to prepare for the DAT, one thing that I strongly, 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 strongly recommend is taking a DAT prep class. Um, and there are, are several of them that are very, very efficient, have had some great results for, for students. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna name a couple of them, none of which I have any affiliation with, but just information wise. So you have DAT, is a Kaplan DAT class, uh, DAT, a thing called Crack the DAT, Crack the DAT. You have this thing called DAT Golden Gold Standard, and there's another one called I Prep Dental. <clears throat> all four, all four or five of those programs are mm -hmm. DAT prep classes that help not only non-traditional students like you and me, but even the basic science. Uh, majors, bio, you know, the, the students that are biology majors and chemistry majors and everything else. It's a great prep course uh, that allows you to become more, more intimately familiar with all the types of questions, how they ask the questions. Um, it's going to help you with the perceptual ability, which is looking at an object, a two-dimensional object, and, a, and how it looks actually in three dimensions. Um, there's uh, some exercises and uh, helping you trying to train your brain and, and trying to figure out and understand that. And then also there's the, the reading comprehension portion also. But that prep class, any one of those prep class, I, I think for new dentists, uh, especially for pre-dental students that are applying to dental school, that is a must. You must, 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 must take one of those classes, especially for a non-traditional student. Uh, just one other nugget about that that prep class in the DAT. 
that DAT is so important that those that prepare for it adequately and get a get a an outstanding grade, you're looking at really being able to um, kind of write your way, write your ticket into any dental school. Why? Because a lot of schools place um, some info. I won't say significant, but heavy, um, he heavy, heavy interest and interest. I'm sorry, heavy. Um, I can't. I can't speak this morning. I haven't had my coffee. They they put heavy significance on that DAT um, as it relates to selection, but also that D a high DAT score could possibly get you a scholarship to many of these different schools. Um, uh, to many schools. And right now, I mean, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the cost of dental edu education, man, but it's high. I mean, there's, there's uh, students that are graduating with debt anywhere from um, 150 or $180,000 a year, all the way up to uh, students from NYU with, a, with a, a, a student loan debt from dental school from 400 to $500,000. But if you are able to really master that DAT and get a good score, you may be offered a scholarship. So that's how important that DA, DAT is for two reasons. Again, to get you into dental school, to write your own ticket, but also it's important because it may allow you an opportunity to get a scholarship. And anytime where you can when you can go to go to school for free or at a reduced wow. amount, you need to look it, look into it. So I would be really, really intentional for those two reasons, being really intentional on, on being able to uh, prepare yourself and get a great score. Okay. So okay. Uh, but but that's that's the second step. The main step right now for you is taking those taking those classes. Um and I will tell you, it's very likely that most admissions committees, they don't care a lot about your, your HR degree. Um, they care more about yep. what, your, what your DAT degree is, which is your DAT score. Yes. Okay, so that's why I would want you to, as you're getting your uh, undergrad degree in 2019, I would also, if you, if you can find a way to infuse one or two classes here, and I would say one class, one science class um, before 19, that would be great. If not, it's okay because your timetable is uh, 2021, 2022, that you're actually looking to start applying. So what's going to happen? I'm thinking and I'm just thinking out loud, out loud, is that you graduate 2019, um, you'll have two more years in the military, your military commitment, right? You will, um, let's see, are you still there? Uh-oh, I think I might have lost you. Yeah, I think we lost him for a second here. Let's see. Let's put him on pause. So what we were talking about was um, with your time frame, you're going to graduate 2019 from yeah. University of Maryland, University College. And then you, you've, yeah. got, you've got another two years before you finish the military. Uh, in 2021, correct? Yes. So what I'm thinking is around 2021 or 2022, that's when you're going to be starting applying to dental school. And that also would mean okay. would be the time that you're probably going to be taking the DAT also, right? Right. So that leaves you two years from the time you graduate, 2019 to 2021, that you can take these prerequisite courses. That gives yourself yeah. two years. 
So that's probably at least, I mean, what, what, go ahead. What, 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 what's your uh, ins, um, advice on doing postback? Because I was looking at a postback at American University in D.C. And uh, I really like their postback. They have really good numbers. And they're a, a postback that's uh, a medical and dental school centric. Because a lot of postbacks are usually just like medical school centric, like uh, Johns Hopkins is strictly medical school, and uh, Joe, GW is medical school. But uh, at doing my research, I, the uh, American Un yeah university. So, so postback is a great option. Uh, especially for you. The one thing that I would want you to look at, though, is is those people that are going to post back and those programs that are accepting students, are they science majors or are they not science majors? Because if you do a post back in, in 19, starting after you, you know, after you graduate UM, UC, you would have graduated with no science at all. Right. So it's so that means it would be very, very important for that post back program, number one, to accept you. But number two, that that post back program has enough science that will allow you will will satisfy the prerequisites yeah. of, yeah. Those, of those courses that you need for the, the schools that you're going to be applying to. So. Yeah. That's the, that would be the only caveat, so to speak, maybe. You would have to find out if the post back programs have enough science that'll, that'll um, fulfill your prerequisites for dental school. Yes, uh, American University, after looking at the curriculum, they have every science, like molecular biology and physics and all that. The only science that they don't provide that you got post back and I might take it before I transition out of the military is anatomy and physiology. But other than that, there it was a pretty, uh, as far as the coursework, and when you align it with my top dental schools that we, hopefully we can uh, speak about and later on in the conversation. Uh, with, my goal was to find a post back that aligns with my top five, you know. And okay. that, that, post, that post from America aligns besides the A&P. So I was thinking, I should go ahead and be proactive and like you mentioned, take science classes before I transition. But my goal was to take as, as, as little science classes before I transition into the most spec, knowing, uh, and tell me if, if you're familiar with this part, um, it's better to group science classes together than taking them one at a time because it shows dental schools that you can handle their rigorous co uh, coursework. Versus if I, if I would take it uh, one science class a semester. I would tell. So I, 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 was, I was still on it. Yeah, I would tell you this, man. Look, mm -hmm. there, there is no assimilation undergrad or post back that's going to show that you're able to handle a dental school curriculum. Dental school is, is, is totally different even from medical yeah. school. But it's, a, it's a totally different monster, man. Even the people that are biology and chemistry majors in undergrad and had – have had three or four years of science. When they get into dental school, everybody it's a restart button. Everybody pushes a red button. Boom, you start all over again. There's there's nothing that's gonna really prepare you enough to to say, all right, he's gonna be all right in dental school with with the classes that you take. So, I mean, that's just my opinion because it's just, I mean, we're we're talking about the class load that you'll have first semester. First year of dental school is equivalent to the same class load that you'll have for the first and second year of a of an undergrad. So the credit hours. Wow. If you're taking 15 to 18 credit hours first year, and then you're taking first semester, and you take another 15 to 18, you're looking at what 30 to 38. I'm sorry, 30 to 36 credit hours for yeah. in two years, two semesters. That is your course load for the first semester of dental school. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. <laughs> so, 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 it, it, it's, it's, it's nothing, it's not really anything that you can really, there's nothing that compares to that on the undergrad setting. Now, what I, what I would say is I, I think 
without taking any science classes in the past, I think taking maybe one or two classes prior to the post back may be helpful as a transition for you to kind of, you know, uh, understand and get some of the basic foundational uh, understanding of the of of the of the topics that you're going to be learning. Because I have a feeling, and I haven't done post back, but I have I know yeah. some students that have. I have a feeling that that post back curriculum is a little bit accelerated. A little bit. It's probably on another level than it is a, a basic biology class uh, on an undergrad level. So I think that um, whether you take one class at a time per semester, you take two. Pre uh, dental school admissions wise, it doesn't tell. It doesn't. It doesn't say that you got to take one or two or take them all together. It just says you have to have <laughs> that coursework done. Yeah. So for me, for you, I would say I would recommend you you take as many as you're comfortable with, which is right now would be one. Because when you graduate yeah. in, in 2019 and you still have your military commitment, you're going to be working pretty much full time. Uncle Sam's going to have you, you know, working full time. So you may only yeah. have time for one one class per semester. You see what I mean? Right. So, That's true. so, so not only do you want to take one class, but you also want you got to keep in mind the grades that you get in that and those classes are going to go towards your overall GPA, which is another yeah. thing that uh, admissions committees look at. I mean, there's this thing now called holistic admissions, where they look at not only your DAT, your G GPA, but they also look at other parts of you as a candidate that um, differentiates you from other candidates, but also how, how you're going to fit into the dental school uh, environment. So it's not just about your grades. It's about, you know, how you present yourself, how you look, how you speak, um, your own personal goals and targets, your future plans for yourself after becoming a dentist. All of that is part of what we call holistic admission. So okay. we want to keep that in mind. But I think for you, one class at a time. Just start. I mean, take, we're going to take the baby steps. Okay. Um, I wanted to mention to you about the post back, which you brought up. There's another program that's very, very popular. I was talking to some pre-dental students at the University of Maryland uh, back in November. They had about 100 of them there. And I would say a good 20, about 20 people that I met after the, the presentation share with me this program called G squared. Have you heard about G squared before? No, it, would that happen to be the summer summer school? Um, G squared is. G squared is a post back program. It's a collaboration between Georgetown University and George Mason University in Northern Virginia. It's a post back program where they uh, are preparing students for health careers, namely medical and dental school. You, what, what I would recommend is that you at least take a look at it, to check out, go to the website, uh, go okay. to G squared, or just put in um, uh, G squared and on your search engine under, under, under Google and see what comes up so that you can look, be a little bit more familiar uh, with that, that type of post back program. Um, and they'll tell you some success. Okay. They'll share with you some success stories they've had with people that are applied to med school, wh what schools they got into after doing that program. Dental school, same thing, what programs they got into or schools they got into after doing that. Um, especially since you're going to potentially uh, consider that as a, as a way of helping you prepare your candidacy and getting into, uh, getting into dental school. So I would, I would look at that too. Yes, I'm looking at it. Yep, yep. So that would be very, very, uh, I think that would be very, very helpful uh, for you overall. Very, very helpful overall. Um, I'm trying to think what, uh, what, other, what other questions related to that? Because 
I mean, th does that sound feasible for you? Like as far as your timeline and kind of inputting those things in into your timeline, does that sound doable? Yes. It, it, it does. Yes, it does. It does sound doable. Uh, your human resource um, degree, one would fit uh, my personal, but also fit that check off the box of having a degree. Um, I'm familiar and I'm glad that you kind of reinforced that um, the degree doesn't matter as much as the prereqs and the DAT. So I just wanted, my question to you is going to be what, um, in the meantime, once I graduated in 19, where should I go? I was thinking maybe a graduate degree that's totally unrelated to science, but that's like out of the question. Um, then I was thinking, okay, what science classes could I take that are non-credits that could prepare me for that postback I'm trying to do at that transition? But I think after speaking to you, I, I feel more comfortable in taking one class at a time, you know, a couple with whatever I can, my, what I can handle my course load until I transition. Once, like what well, we mentioned, my baby steps. I think I believe that's where I'll be going after, after I, uh, with my career, uh, personal educational career, after I graduate in 19. I'll just take the fast classes as I can. Yeah, I, so, I, 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 I'm glad you came to that conclusion. That I think that's going to be the best way to do it, man. After 19, start your science one or two. I would just start off with one class at a time, man, and then also yeah. get into a post back program. That post back program is going to be is going to have some some other pearls and some other gems. The up, those pearls and gems is are the fact that you're going to be able to meet other people that have your same mindset, your same mentality, which is a career in healthcare, whether it's pharmacy, whether it's veterinary science, whether it's medicine, or whether it's dentistry. Because you want to start networking with those people. You want to be around those same people. Mm -hmm. Not only that, if you do find some people that are, in, are going to be applying to dental school, now you've got a dental buddy. you got a pre-dental buddy, so to speak, that you can connect with. And he or she can yeah. share their information about schools that they're applying to. And you can share your information. But it's, it's, another, it's going to serve as another research, resource <laughs> for you. Um, what you'll find throughout life and through yeah. careers well, is, is not necessarily uh, what you know, but it's who you know. Who you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly, uh, Dr. Darwin. What, what it actually that's what kind of brought me. What actually brought me to your Darwin speaks uh, video on YouTube. Uh, what what really resonated with me from one of your videos was when you spoke about um, connecting with. Uh, admissions uh, recruiters for the universities, but also getting involved with the pre dental students that are already at schools like like Harvard. Like I got from your one of your videos that the impression state that happens in March that I should be there, that I should be involved. You know, be around those kind of people because like like you mentioned about who you know, I I do agree. You know, I believe my network should be greater than my net worth. And, and then that will bring myself up. So I, I kind of live by that. And after you said that, that's when I knew I had to kind of reach out to you and continue to um, build off of that video that I saw. You, that's good, man. Yeah, you, you definitely, uh, I think one of your questions uh, on your co coaching forum was, you know, should you get involved with the DC Dental Society? And uh, absolutely, because you, remember, this is all part of your screening process to really reaffirm your interest and your passion for dentistry. Um, not only that, but people that are in those local dental societies may know current admissions officers at either the school that they went to or any, any of the local schools too. With you being in Maryland, I mean, you know, the Maryland, D.C., Virginia yeah. area, uh, you've got two prominent schools right there. You've got Howard University and you have the University of Maryland that's in, that's in Baltimore. So um, there's a plethora, plethora yeah. of, of uh, alumni of both of those institutions in the area, but also many of them are active in any, some of the local dental societies. So yes, 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 yes. You should be involved in uh, those local dental societies as a pre-dental student. Um, both schools, Howard, uh, University of Maryland, College Park, 
and I'm sure all the other schools that are in, in the uh, Maryland, D.C., Northern Virginia area, I'm sure there's a pre-dental society that they have. That also is very important. That's where you're going to find other people like yourself that are interested in, in applying to dental school. So, yeah, connect with them. Link up with them. Network with them. Um, they, may, they even maybe will be able to give you maybe a free – some free um, study books that they have from their DAT class that they either have completed or getting ready to complete. You know, you may get a good deal on buying the, buying some of the old tests, yeah. buying some of the programs. Yeah. So I, I think that's a, that's a good thing to do. Also, I think you mentioned on your uh, questionnaire, uh, determining, you know, whether or not you should work at a, actually working at a dental practice versus volunteering. Um, I, th I think both, I think both of those, yeah. yeah, I think both of those are good things to do, whether you're actually getting paid to do it or you're just volunteering and your, your payment is the experience in exchange for your time. Either or, either or. I mean, you're, you're kind of coming into the profession with you know, with the background of already being a dental assistant, so you can kind of see um, that environment, but you see it from a military standpoint, which is a little bit different in, in some uh, versus private practice or even what we call corporate or dental service organization dentistry. So volunteering in some of those offices or even, you know, in 19, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, because you'll, you'll still be in the military after 19. You still have two years. But either maybe even volunteering, if you're able to volunteer outside of your current dental uh, environment with the military, maybe on a Saturday if you're able to. Um, and yeah. by, by being involved in the, and with the local dental societies, you'll be able to meet people who may be willing to allow you to shadow and volunteer in their offices such a great great thing to do uh you get to see more about dentistry and what that's going to do is it'll allow you to do this it'll allow you to have more information more content to write or to include in your personal statement for dental school you can talk about all these different experiences that you've had and expose wow. the things that you've seen done and why you like it right I, I think for you, that's going to be one of your, one of your strengths, yeah. a major strength for you as a candidate because being in, a, being in the military, having, being able to see that, how dentistry is practiced there, and then also in the private sector, um, that's an experience that you can communicate. Everyone, commissions, uh, admissions committees, we like stories. We like to hear stories about how you found dentistry and based on your experiences. And, it, and, it, and it's also a requirement. They want candidates to fully understand and be exposed to dentistry before they even get to dental school. So yes. you got to do that. You got to volunteer. You got to network with people in societies because they're going to help you. They're going to be a source of offices that you can shadow and volunteer out of. But they're also, the last point I wanted to say uh, about that is, they will also serve as maybe a letter of recommendation for you too, which is huge. Getting a letter of recommendation from someone that knows you best, from someone who's a current dentist, uh, and maybe from someone who's a graduate of one of the five schools that you already have in your list for dental school. That person is an alum. That person remembers what it's like to go through that yeah. program. So. Yeah. If they can talk about you and your character and your drive and your passion, um, the, the, that's the person that's going to talk best about, about, about you to the admissions committee by forming a letter of recommendation. Again, another reason why you got to be involved or start getting involved and in meeting people uh, in, in the local dental societies and, and, and volunteering in their offices and practices. How's that sound? That's that's sounds phenomenal, and that's a, that's a lead I'm going to follow and follow up with. 
That's good, man. That's good. That's good. Well, hey, man, I, I, I hope all of this uh, has been uh, been helpful for you. Um, uh, for those of you that are out there that have similar questions, like future student Dr. Dion about applying to dental school and some direction with regards to that, please feel free to send me an email at newdentistcoach at gmail.com, newdentistcoach at gmail.com. Again, feel free to subscribe. Share this with other people that you know. Share with other people that are in your network or maybe that are in your post back program or someone that's at your undergrad school that's uh, applying to dental school and, you know, it's, it's a good friend of yours and you guys are trying to get into the same dental school together. Share this video. Hopefully it'll, it'll help them the way it's been helping you. So future student Dr. Dion, hey, man, thanks so much for your question and for your time. And uh, I think we're on a mission, man. We got, let's see. It's 2018 now. You're going to be applying for the class of uh, 2027. So we got about nine years. We're going to be working together, man. I hope you're ready. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm ready. You're ready. Hopefully this, this gray hair will, will stay the same or change colors, maybe go back to black over these next nine years. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see, man. But but anytime, if you have questions, um, I'm down in the Maryland area uh, very uh, very frequently. I give a couple of lectures to the dental students there, but also to the Student National Dental Association. They have different types of uh, after-hour networking um, opportunities for students and also for the local alums in the area. That That is also another impressions program that you should go to. University of Maryland has their impressions program usually in November. November. But I would tell you if you're ever okay. back, if you're ever back in Florida, St. Pete, I think that's where you said you're from. Um, you know, University of Florida has. Uh, I'm sure they have some impressions yes. too. Yes. Yeah. 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 And one other quick tip that I would uh, tell you to, to, to consider, if you can get some, um, some TDY time or something similar to that, uh, you should consider going to the Student National Dental Association National Convention in July. It's July 11th to the 15th, and it's in your home state of Florida. It's in Orlando, Florida. July 11th to the 15th. The Student National Dental Association is the student okay. component. It's the student component of the NDA, and at that national meeting, not only would you get which will you get a chance to meet other dentists and other students that are currently in dental school, but they have a, a part of their program dedicated to undergrads or pre dentals, and I would want you to to. To, to go to that so that you can get infused into the pipeline as part of the dental pipeline um, that's out there to kind of help you shift and navigate this process of becoming a dentist. So if you have questions about that, just let me know and we'll get you, uh, get you the information that you need, but you can go directly right on to the website. I think it's um, snda.net or snda.online.net. Just, just Google mm -hmm. SNDA, Student National Dental Association, and the website mm -hmm. will come up. And uh, you can continue to do your networking there and make some plans to attend that meeting. OK? OK. Sounds good, man. Good luck to you, and, and we'll, we'll be in touch. Sure will. Take care. Let it go. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.